Now the trial proven beta blockers are just three, metoprolol, carvedilol, and bisoprolol, respectively following the Meritechev, the Sibis, and the Copernicus trials, all of which had a 34% mortality benefit compared to placebo. Hi students, this is Dr. Jostel again and I am here to update you with an update. Uh, the American College of Cardiology in 2021 has come out with an expert consensus uh, statement on heart failure. As you know, the initial heart failure guideline was released in 2013 when I was doing my MD. And the 2016-17, uh, they introduced another expert consensus decision pathway when I was doing my DM cardiology. And now they have come up in 2021 with an update to that expert consensus a statement with the latest evidence that we have up until now. I thought it would be important that you have a, a brief idea about this because it is definitely a potential for questions for your NEET SS uh, upcoming exam. Reason being, it will not be figured in your textbooks, but it is definitely a very high, uh, overtly discussed topics in these ongoing months. Now, when we come to the 2021 update on from American College of Cardiology, um, we are only talking about patients who have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, who are symptomatic, that is stage C heart failure, and uh, who have chronic heart failure. In other words, we have, this, does not, this guideline or this update does not talk about people with acute decompensated heart failure requiring inotropes who are refractory, who are in stage D. It does not talk about stage A and B heart failure who are only at risk of heart failure like high, high, hypertensive individuals or patients who have structural heart disease but are asymptomatic like patients who have concentric LVH. It totally talks about patients who are symptomatic with heart failure that is stage C but are not refractory. So it excludes stage D. And then it also talks about only a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So ejection fraction less than 40%. We are not talking about heart failure with reserve ejection fraction. So just to get you uh, oriented properly, this 2021 American College of Cardiology update is dealing with stage C heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And it is a 10 point sort of update focusing on multiple things including referring patients to a specialist or treatment for advanced care. But I would like to focus on the pharmacological therapy that has been updated. As you are aware, the pillars of treating heart failure have always been, of course, treatment of ischemia and apart from that, treatment with ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, beta blockers, mineralocortic receptor antagonists, diuretics for uh, symptomatic benefit but not mortality benefit and didoxin in certain specific scenarios. In the 2021, this has been uh, significantly upgraded and modified so much so that hereafter we do not call it just ACE inhibitors ARBs, we call the class as ARNI ACE inhibitor ARBs. In other words, it is not even called ACE inhibitor ARB ARB. ARNI has come first, meaning that angiotensin receptor neutralizing inhibitor, that is sacubitril valsara, this drug has been more uh, favored or recommended than starting the patient on an ACE inhibitor like lamipril or enalapril or an uh, angiotensin receptor blocker like losartan or uh, candesartan or valsartan. The reason being that in the Paradigm HF trial for sacubitril valsartan, when it was compared with uh, enalapril, it showed a 4.7% reduction in heart failure hospitalization or cardiovascular death compared to enalapril and it showed a 20% relative risk reduction when it comes to sudden cardiac death, heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death. And that is why sacubitril valsartan has superseded the recommendation for uh, treating heart failure more than ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Now, in the PROOF HF trial, it was shown that even patients who are ACE inhibitor ARB naive or who have been, have been started de novo on sacubitril valsartan also show a similar benefit and that is why sacubitril valsartan can also be started as the first drug to treat stage C heart failure with reduced ischemic fraction. It's not necessary that the patient has, should have been on an ACE inhibitor ARB and then only started on sacubitril valsartan. So, this is one update where it is clearly mentioned that the class is now called uh, ARNI ACE inhibitor ARB and uh, ARNIs can also be started de novo. One important thing to remember is if you, the patient is already on an ACE inhibitor like Ramipril or Enalapril, it requires that the patient has a 36 hour washout period where the patient receives neither the ACE inhibitor nor the ARNI and only then the ARNI may be initiated. This is to prevent risk of angioedema. As you know, ACE, inhibit, ACE inhibitors inhibit the ACE enzyme which converts both angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 
and also on the other hand breaks down bradykinin. So when you give an ACE inhibitor, it increases, it decreases the concentration of angiotensin 2 agree, which is good, but it also increases the concentration of bradykinin, and this bradykinin is implicated in bronchospasm and angioedema. And that is why uh, the combination of uh, sacubitril valsartan with ACE inhibitor should be completely avoided. This uh, 36 hour wash off period does not apply if the patient is already on angiotensin receptor blocker like losartan or valsartan. You can directly switch over to an angiotensin receptor nectarized inhibitor or sacubitril valsartan. There is only one drug in the class of army as uh, up, as of today that is sacubitril valsartan which is recommended. Now sacubitril valsartan comes as a combination of either 50 milligram, 100 milligram or 200 milligram but sacubitril and valsartan respectively come, uh, uh, are constituted as 24 and 26 milligram in 50 milligram, uh, 97 and uh, 103 milligram in 200 milligram. You should remember these numbers and 49 and 51 milligram in 100 milligram. So these are the combinations of sacubitril valsartan. You can of course read it in uh, more detail uh, in the guideline itself or in uh, pharmacology but that is the first class to be started and the co-first class we wouldn't say this is first and this is second the co-first class would be beta blockers now the trial proven beta blockers are just three metoprolol carvedolol and bisoprolol respectively following the meritages the sibis and the copernicus trials all of which had a 34 percent mortality benefit compared to placebo that is why the only beta blockers that are recommended for the treatment of heart failure are these, not the other beta blockers which you might have been using as antihypertensives or for other indications. So the only three beta blockers that are recommended in the guideline are carvedilol, metoprolol and metoprolol succinate and uh, bisoprolol. They have also given the maximum doses or the target doses that have to be achieved in each class which again you can read in detail uh, to make matters simple metoprolol succinate's maximum dose or target dose should be 200 milligrams per day carvedilol's maximum dose is 25 milligrams twice daily or if the body weight is more than 85 kilograms it is 50 milligrams twice daily and bisoprolol could be started at 1.25 milligrams per day and go up to 10 milligrams per day it is recommended as a single dose for bisoprolol once daily dosing although in indian practice uh, commonly it is given as a twice daily dosing Whereas uh, metoprolol and uh, carvedilol are always given as twice daily dosing. Now, uh, whether you start a beta blocker first or an ACE inhibitor ARB RD first has always been a matter of discussion. This 2021 update has sort of simplified the matter by saying if the patient is in some, uh, has some evidence of fluid overload, that is, uh, has an elevated JVP or pedal edema, then the first drug definitely should be an ACE inhibitor ARB RD. If the patient has some amount of renal dysfunction, then the first drug would be a beta blocker if the patient is uh, dry. So that if, so that if the patient is fluid overloaded or in inverted comas wet mentioned in the guideline, then the recommendation would be to start with an asymptomatic airway or an RD. Whereas if the patient has renal dysfunction and is relatively dry or not fluid overloaded, then the, the first drug would be beta blocker. These drugs should be started at lower doses and up titrated every once in two weeks to reach their targeted dose as much as the patient can tolerate. The third drug would be mindrolopatopid receptor antagonists or spironolactone or epilirinone. These should be started at 25 mg and go up to 50 mg. Care should be taken that the potassium should not be more than 5, that the creatinine in males should not be more than 2.5, creatinine should not be more than 2 mg percent in females or the EGFR shouldn't be less than 30. When spironolactone or epilirinone is started, importantly, the, it is important that the patient is monitored for his potassium and creatinine once after first three days of initiation, once after the first week and after that once in every three months. So this is one drug which requires periodic monitoring of potassium to avoid dangerous hyperkalemia. A new class of drugs that has come in this uh, recommendation uh, which was also there earlier but has come as you know way up in the recommendation is the SGLT2 inhibitors, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors which is empagliflozin and dapagliflozin. Dapagliflozin in the DAPHF trial and empagliflozin in the emperor reduced trials have shown benefit in heart failure even in non-diabetics. So although they were initially initiated as introduced as anti-diabetic drugs, they are now beneficial in both diabetics and non-diabetics in stage 3 heart failure with reduced restriction fraction and they have a high recommendation in this 2021 update. That is why uh, the easy thing to remember about EDVA and uh, dapagliflozins are both of their target doses are 10 mg and both these drugs are given as once daily dosing. One thing you should remember is that empagliflozin can be given uh, as long as the EGFR is more than 20. Dapagliflozin can only be given if the EGFR is more than 30. That is how things stand 
as of now in 2021 i think as time advances the recommendation for uh, the cliflozins can become even higher we will see that as guidelines get updated then coming to three classes of drugs which are not initiated right away but if the patient has any persistent issue these drugs are initiated these three drugs are if the patient has persistent volume overload you should consider loop diuretics and if loop diuretics are insufficient even at higher doses like furosemide of 40 mg to 80 mg per day then the patient may require a thiazide type or thiazide diuretic so fluid overload persistent even if the patient may require a diuretic it has no mortality benefit but has symptom benefit then comes if the patient has persistent symptoms of heart failure despite the other medications then or if the patient has renal dysfunction and especially not in the indian scenario but in the western scenario in blacks or african american population isosorbide dinitrate hydralazine combination it comes as a fixed dose combination of 37.5 mg of hydralazine and 20 mg of isosorbide dinitrate initiated at uh, a thrice daily dosing that is initiated at 111 Uh, and going up to two two two, that is two tablets uh, thrice daily is the target dose for uh, hydralazine with isosorbide diuretic combination. This is in patients who have renal dysfunction where you can't give an ACE inhibitor ARB or ARNI or a mineral apartment acid antagonist, and in patients who have sim- persistent symptoms despite the earlier guideline directed medical therapy, as I mentioned already. Finally, we come to ivabradin. Ivabradin is a drug. to be recommended in heart failure patients with reduced resistance fraction if they are already on a maximally tolerated beta blocker dose and yet their heart rate is more than 70 so that is as simple as that so somebody with a heart rate of more than 70 in sinus rhythm not in atrial fibrillation can be initiated on ivabradin 2.5 mg twice daily going up to 5 mg twice daily going even up to 7.5 mg twice daily which is the maximum dose now when we say maximum tolerated beta blocker what we are talking about is beta blockers in especially in the indian population we may not achieve 25 mg twice daily for carbidolol or 200 mg per day of metoprolol the reason be the indian population may not tolerate such high beta blocker doses because of the hypotension that the patient has and they may have giddiness so you can only give so much beta blocker to a patient though you want to you know prevent progression of heart failure and that is when ivabradin can come to your rescue it can be given even in combination with the beta blockers or if patient patients are too sensitive to beta blockers it can be given even in isolation uh, but always a beta blocker has to be tried first because it has pluripotent benefits whereas ivabradin just reduces the heart uh, rate the sinus heart rate and the target is to keep the heart rate at between 50 to 70 the resting heart rate not including the heart rate at sleep if the heart rate is less than 50 when the patient is started ivabradin the dose has to be reduced from 5 twice daily to 2.5 twice daily and maybe even has to be stopped if the heart rate is less than 50 if the heart rate is persistently more than 60 ivabradin dose can be up titrated to a maximum of 7.5 mg b so in this 2021 update apart from a lot of other things discuss- discussed some things that they have clarified is regarding the uh, initiation of beta blockers versus ACE inhibitors RDs angiotensin receptor blockers which can be started first uh, which requires a washout period how you should up titrate these drugs all of these drugs have been simplified you know in brown walls if you read the earlier editions they used to say that beta blockers should be up titrated once in 2 weeks whereas ACE inhibitors ARBs should be up titrated quicker like once in a week or once in 3 days if the patient tolerates but in this 2021 update it is again clarified that all of these drugs have to be updated up titrated only once in 2 weeks ACE inhibitors ARBs RNAs beta blockers mineral carbon receptor antagonists all of these drugs if you are planning to up titrate the dose to an optimal guideline directed medical therapy uh, the up titration can be done once in 2 weeks which is more than sufficient in uh, chronic heart failure i hope this update has helped you out a lot of the questions a lot of the uh, foundations of this this guideline can be indirectly crafted forged into questions that can be asked in the upcoming neat ss so keep this in mind it is the 2021 um, expert consensus decision pathway from the american college of cardiology so this is dr joshua signing off i hope this has helped you all the best keep preparing do your best make sure you clear this neat ss and get your seat don't uh, attend the course next year thank you bye